If you're going to innovate, you have to have a tolerance, a high risk tolerance, and you also have to have a really strong appreciation that failure can be a good thing. In other words, as long as you're learning something from that failure. So good failure is something where you tried something for logical reasons. It made sense why you tried it. It was a reasonable hypothesis. And then when you put it out there, you were very clear what was the measurement for success and failure. And if it failed, you did your best to understand why it failed. And then you looked back and you learned and got smarter about it. A bad example of failure can be, you know, multifold. It could be you tried something, but you really don't have a compelling reason. This is what we're trying, this is why, and this is where we think is going to happen based on what we're trying. If it's not compelling in the way that it misses some internal logic, and then it fails, you really have no excuse because it didn't make sense what you were presenting or you didn't present it in a clear, logical way. That's one. Another kind of failure that's not the good kind of failure is when you failed, you learn why you failed, and then you try again the same thing because maybe out of some stubbornness or I gotta be right, there's gotta be something wrong here. So if you keep on making the same mistake over again and you don't learn from your past, that's a bad kind of failure too. But I couldn't, you know, I, I hate to say something so obvious, but if you're not falling on your face once in a while, maybe even pretty often, then you're not an innovative culture. There are times when we've fallen at, as a company. There are times that we have stumbled, we have fallen down, and then we've gotten up and we've made things better. You want to lean so far forward that sometimes you're going to fall on your face. But it's important when you do fall on your face, you get up, you brush yourself off, you learn why you fell on your face, you try not to make that same mistake again, and you try to improve the experience. An example is when we launched into Latin America. We didn't really, we were new to the global scene. We didn't really understand what it would take to be successful in countries and non-English speaking countries outside of the US and Canada. So we launched in Latin America and we really don't understand how to make that work at first. And at first we were planted a firm face plant in Brazil and Mexico and so forth. We didn't have consistent language assets. We weren't sure if subtitling or dubbing would work. We weren't sure exactly what kind of content would play in Latin America. So we stumbled out of the gate. But the exciting thing is, after we fell on our face, we got up, we brushed ourselves off, we learned about how to make a better experience. We learned on the language front. Put out everything with subtitles and dubbing because different people enjoy different ways to watch it across Brazil, across Mexico, across Colombia and all of Latin America. So that was super important. Come up with good payment methods that work across these countries. We didn't really get that. Then we learned that over time. So it first started out being some place where we did stumble out of the gate and we weren't successful and we became very successful over time. When we guide the design and then the ultimate development of any part of the Netflix experience, there are certain questions that we have to ask ourselves. Like, because we're very test-centric and we're trying things, there's a really careful line you have to draw between what's the minimum viable product you don't want to overinvest in something that might not work. And we've done that. We've made that mistake many times where you're so passionate about something and you want to make it so good because you want your test to succeed that you overly invest in it. And if it doesn't succeed, you wasted a lot of time on an idea that really doesn't swim. But on the other side, if you create something that's so much of a minimum viable product, emphasis on two minimum, then it's not viable and you really get a false negative because maybe it was a good idea and if you just would have put a little more polish on it and you really never know the answer to that. So you're threading a needle. You don't want to overinvest, you want to underinvest. So very much, you know, we're telling, you know, we're talking to the product managers, the designers, the engineers of we're always debating about where that line is.